Hey guys, hi and welcome to the part 2 of the video uh, on getting started with Apache Hoodie Delta Streamer in AWS DMS building a complete CDC pipeline. So the first part basically I went over the architecture what we are about to build in the project right and now it's time to get your hands dirty and actually do something right. So let's get started. So this is part 2 and this is the architecture that we are going to build right. So uh, we'll have our operational database, which, which is where insert update would be happening. And we'll be basically capturing that using DMS and bringing those parquet files into S3. From there, we'll spin up an EMR cluster, which will be running Delta Streamer. So first, what we need to do is we need to spin up an Aurora cluster. So come to your AWS management console, uh, click on create database, uh, standard create, then select on Aurora Postgres compatible, uh, scroll down. Click on dev test, give it a name. I, I'll, I'll leave it default, doesn't really matter. The username will be Postgres. The password will be Postgres. And here we are gonna choose serverless. Uh, you can leave everything to default here. Uh, in the VPC part, we're gonna click on create new VPC. Uh, yeah, we're gonna click on create new VPC. Public access, we're gonna say yes for now, okay? That's important. And then, yeah, that's fine. We'll leave that to default. Everything else, uh, yeah, performance matrix, I don't need it, so I'm gonna disable that. And just reviewing everything. Uh, yeah, everything else looks fine. And we're gonna create the cluster. So I'm gonna click on this orange button that says create database. So in the architecture at this point, we have a transactional database where insert update deletes will be happening. Uh, this might take about a, you know about 15 to 20 minutes uh, to basically create uh, the database. As you can see, it's in the creating state. Once the database is created, we need to basically uh, change certain settings so that we could enable CDC on the table. So I'm gonna resume once the database is created and then we're gonna make um, those changes or the settings that I'm going to talk about. So let me let me resume once the database is uh, created. Okay. So my database is finally in the available state, and I'm going to share my screen. As you can see here, it's in the available state. So hopefully, if you are following all the steps with me, now what we need to do is we need to essentially allow inbound traffic so that we can connect to this, right? So I'm going to show you the steps. So now click here on the writer one, and then scroll down and until you see VPC security group, click there on the new tab, click on the inbound rules, edit inbound rules, and then here you can simply add all traffic and then just say anywhere within IPv4. So you can select anywhere within IPv4. I've already done that option, so just wanted to make sure you guys have that setting, otherwise you won't be able to connect. Now I'm gonna connect to the database using a client tool called PG admin. You can uh, again use different tools if needed, right? So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna come 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 on the bottom section. Actually, come to the database, click here, and now I'm gonna copy the writer endpoint. Okay, so I'll copy that. Let me remove this one. Now we need to add the database on our PG admin. So I'm gonna right click register server and call this anything that you like. I'm calling it YouTube video. Put the, you know, the connection string over here. The username is Postgres, the password is Postgres and the database name is Postgres. Click on save. And if you observe, I'm able to connect to the database now. Now we need to define certain settings on the database so that we could essentially enable change data capture on the database, right? So I'm gonna do that and you can follow the steps. And again, all these steps will be given on my GitHub section as well. So yeah, so the next step is basically we need to uh, do certain tweaks. So come to the writer endpoint and uh, you want to come to configuration and scroll down until you see something called DB cluster parameter group. Click on that. Okay. Uh, now I'll walk you over the steps what you need to do over here. Okay. Now scroll up where you see parameter group, right? Click on this option. Again, I already have one, but we're gonna create one for you. So click on create parameter group. And then here you will select your Postgres version. So probably Postgres, Aurora Postgres 14. Over here, this has to be database cluster parameter group. This is important. The group name would be, you can name it anything. 
and click there and then click on create option so as you can see i have done that now click on the parameter uh, uh, click on the parameter group now here we need to change certain settings and again these settings are given on the dms um, uh, i mean given on the blog post right but i'm going to show you i don't want you to go over all of these stuff so i'm actually going to show you what you need to do so uh, i'm going to open up my snippets uh just want to resize that one okay so the first thing that we need to do is rds logical replication we got to set that to 1 oops i didn't copy that correctly copy so we're going to set this to 1 so i'm going to select edit parameter group change that to 1 click on save the next one that is wall sender timeout we're going to set this to this number so we're going to come here now this one i'm going to copy that again these will be available on the uh, in the github section or on the link as well so i'm going to click here click on save changes these two settings are important otherwise if you don't enable it and if you directly start the dms part it's gonna start throwing errors it's not gonna work so make sure you do this part okay now you are done with this part now what we need to do is we need to apply this to the aurora database and we need to reboot the database i'll show you the steps so back to again the database and if i recollect my steps correctly uh, hopefully now you want to click here and then click on modify scroll down on the bottom section until you see database option and here you can see my custom group this is the one that we just made right uh, so basically select the one that you just made and then what you want to do is come down click on continue then click on apply immediately this is important okay so you want to click on that now the the changes shall be applied so let's refresh now what you want to do is once that is done you have to reboot the cluster again from my past when i was doing it uh, if i did not reboot um, the dms was not working uh, properly so reboot is required so i'm gonna come here uh, let me see gonna come here action i'm gonna click on reboot and then click on confirm and now it should be rebooting and this will take about a second or two or probably about five minutes roughly now hopefully uh, in the first part what we have done is a we have essentially spinned up our aurora postgres cluster and we were able to connect to the cluster using pg admin and then basically we applied certain settings uh, and then basically we have, uh, have rebooted the cluster once all of this is done once the reboot is complete we can basically create some dummy tables and then we can head over to the dms part so hopefully until this part it should be clear and again the steps can be found on the github as well okay so now will be the next part will be part three where we'll be creating some tables and essentially then move to the dms part